How's it going, everyone? Welcome to the preseason interview for the coach of the Detroit Luxuries Gamer Views. First and foremost, my friend, how are you doing today? I am doing well, doing well, uh, prepping for season four and also trying to balance that prep work with actual work, with school, with Xenoblade Chronicles 3. <laughs> you can tell which one's the priority on that list. <laughs> Oh, uh, Xenoblade, definitely. Exactly, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, now, to any of the people who may have found you through either the EBL channel or some of the other coaches in the EBL, uh, why don't you go ahead and give them a little intro as to who you are, what you do on the channel, and just, you know, in general, what you're about. Yeah, absolutely. So, how's it going, everybody? Uh, my name is Game Reviews. I do 99% of my pro 99% of my content is Pokemon related. Uh, out of everybody in the EBL, I probably am the one who is known as the fan game let's player. Uh, just finished up my latest fan game series and starting off a new series currently. And I also do some. I also do streaming as well. Uh, trying to get more outside of just pokemon those so i've been doing kingdom hearts and i do plan on going back into some shiny hunts very soon nice all right now to get into the real meat and potatoes of the interview let's get uh, into this first question what is going through your head as we continue to get closer and closer to the start of the season Really, how my season is very difficult, and I blame Stone Family sixty four for it, even though <laughs> it was completely random. <laughs> hey, you just blame him for everything. He's the commissioner. Of course, exactly. <laughs> I'm blaming him absolutely. <laughs> now you've been around since the very beginning of the EBL. You were one of the very first competitors. Um, are you feeling more or less confident heading into this season compared to your last ones? More confidence. Uh, obviously, from season one and season two, I was not good at all. Come last season, my Pokemon Salamence got MVP of the season. And I just feel like from season three till now, I learned more of competitive, where instead of sticking with a niche, have that base there, but then build outside of it as well. So that's where uh, this season four team is kind of developed from um i will say i it, it would make sense for you to have more confidence after last season so i, I think that's big <laughs> uh it was a big season for you uh because that was one of the best comebacks we've seen so far in ebl one of the biggest turnarounds um kind of touched on it already a little bit but how are your preparations going so far heading into the season so far so good um i just have to level up a few more pokemon and i have and i have to ev train aside from that i have natures move sets and abilities all taken care of nice um now speaking on your team looking at the team that you drafted here let's go ahead and list it off in draft order uh you have kyogre ludicolo scizor gengar rotom heat zapdos seismitoad gyarados and Probably one of the more interesting dra uh, picks of the draft, Mill Tank. <laughs> um, <laughs> how do you think your your draft went? It went as good as I could hope for. Um, yes. I did not get sniped at all, and I feel like I played my draft well enough to get the picks that I wanted. Uh, obviously, starting off at the top of the list, you list off Kyogre followed by Ludicolo and then Scizor. Obviously, yeah. the game plan <laughs> was to get people thinking I'm going for a rain-based team and all I'm going to do is draft rain-based Pokemon. Mm -hmm. So midway through, switching over to other Pokemon to give me other coverages I think was a better option for me. Plus, I was drafting earlier Pokemon of ones who I knew that people would want. Yeah. That's why you see Pokemon like Seismitoad, Gyarados, and Miltank, especially Miltank, at the very bottom. <laughs> yeah, that, that would make sense. <laughs> uh i think out of all of those the only one anyone made it uh clear that they wanted was gengar uh i know yes. derek wanted that but uh the f that was actually pretty smart to move it up because gengar's kind of been a hot pick in the last couple seasons i feel like the uh, scissor as well that was, that was a good uh that was a good pickup to move it earlier um now how are you feeling about the team that you're able to put together i mean i'm assuming getting all the pokemon you wanted probably helps but uh how are you feeling about the, your team 
I feel very good about it. I feel like I have a lot of my bases covered of what my competitor competitors could throw my way, and I have a few tricks of my own sleeve that I don't think my competitors are expecting from me with certain Pokemon. Especially Milk Tape. Oh, <laughs> I'm gonna keep saying. <laughs> uh, now I'm gonna preface these two questions by saying you don't have to answer them or you don't have to give detailed answers. That is perfectly okay. Um, are there any Pokemon on your team that you feel have a good chance of getting MVP throughout the season? There are a few of them. Um, I feel like obviously this is playing my cards right kind of scenario. Zapdos mm -hmm. and Gengar. Zapdos uh, is obviously making a debut for the, those of you who don't know. So I'm I'm also yeah. There's a lot of Pokemon on your team. I'm very interested to see how you use them <laughs> because I, some of them either haven't been used in the way I feel like you're going to use them, or just haven't been seen like Zapdos. So I, I'm definitely intrigued. I yeah, feel like I, I feel like you I could have, do a good job with them. I got three Pokemon that have not been seen. Right? Because uh, has he been used? Uh, you, you buy me. <laughs> oh, okay, got it. Okay, so just two Pokemon then. Okay, Zapdos and Melting, because I know nobody's touched Melting before. I don't think anybody's drafted Gyarados either, from my it memory. Was his pick, maybe. I, I don't know. I, I'm not sure. If it has, it's only been like once. But right. <laughs> uh, regardless, do you feel there are any underrated Pokemon on your team? Melting. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> uh oh man i'm i'm I, yeah man i can't you wait are, to use you it you already know what this pokemon can do just look at whitney that's all you yeah <laughs> it is it can be a wall it can hit pretty hard oh yeah i'm excited to see how you use it um how confident are you in your ability to fully utilize your team to its max potential very confident i've already uh have team builds in mind for basically the best way to utilize the individual abilities and everything and how they call work together as a team mm, nice um do you think your team will be able to stack up well against the rest of the league definitely nice. uh a lot of people in the league just kind of looking at them it it has it, like they paint a picture of what they're trying to do with their builds somewhat whereas for me Obviously, I paint a picture of a rain team, but their rain focus is very minimal in the grand scheme. Yeah, you, uh, it's. I mean, you did like like you mentioned it with your draft. Yeah, you made it. It was a nice little fake out you did, and I think that's gonna help um, help with you in terms of like throwing out the other team in terms of preparation and stuff like that. Um, now, shifting the focus here on a bigger scale, you know, on the league, uh, you are in the Sino division. Alongside the Florida for Alligators and the Iowa Incineroar, what were your thoughts when you saw who you were put uh, put with in that division? Uh, very nervous, cause both both uh, Inferno Men and Guanaco Gaming they are t they are two tough competitors. So this is not going to be an easy season to uh, make to the playoffs, unfortunately. But it just makes me want to work harder. Oh, I like that mentality. I like that. Um, now, looking at your schedule here, I mean, we've already kind of touched on how difficult of a season you have. Uh, maybe one of the harder schedules in the league. Yeah. Uh, you have the Iowa Incineroar, a division rival right off the rip. Um, then you have the Atlanta Braviary, which we all know that's a matchup that happens <laughs> all the time. <laughs> then you have the ooh, doo -doo -doo, the Tijuana Gengar, TJ Gengar. Um then the Kentucky Kinglers, and then the the Florida for Alligators, so your other division rivals. So your your schedule is sandwiched by both your division rivals. Not an yes. easy schedule, uh, I will say. You, you got some pretty tough competitors in there. Um, did seeing your schedule make you more excited for the season to start? Yes. Um, just because, no offense to my competitors from last season, but it felt like an easy season for me so kind of having it be be like you know flipped 180 to the other extreme makes mm. me very excited nice uh makes you want to work harder like you mentioned yes, absolutely. um in, in terms of difficulty how would you rate your schedule out of 10 eight makes sense with the mm. way you've been <laughs> with the way you've been talking about it um <laughs> 
Is there anyone who is not on your schedule that you would like to face at some point? Uh, for me, it's got to be the Texas Tyranitar. The doorman and I, we are we have been collab partners for almost a year now, I feel like. We've been doing collabs together for almost a year. And as much as Stone Family 64, him and I have the rivalry, the rivalry in the EBL, the doorman and I have an even bigger rivalry. So mm -hmm. it's unfortunate. It's unfortunate I won't be able to battle him in this season, but hopefully I see him in the playoffs. Yeah, that's that's your best bet there. Who knows? Um, now, looking at the league, which teams do you feel are looking the most dangerous, not including your own? Hmm. I mean, right off the bat, the Florida for Alligators, they definitely have a weakness there, but some of the Pokemon on their team has those status coverages taken care of for them. Two of the nine Pokemon have Prankster, could have Prankster for their ability, so setting up shields, setting up mm -hmm. status conditions, those are strong there. Um, I would also write up uh your team uh mr lonely hermit as well as a good uh contender because i've never really seen this many a couple of these pokemon i haven't really seen used in vgc so i'm interested to yeah. see how you adapt and create your team to um I, yeah. what you have in store just tried to put together a good mishmash <laughs> <laughs> i would say so yeah um but obviously, teams I'm not really worried about. This may or may not bite me when I'm playing battle against him, but Stone Family 64. The all bugs. <laughs> the, uh, the all bug team. If I can't beat them, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> uh, do, is there any team you feel looks dangerous from the uh, other conference, from the Dynamax conference? Yeltnev's team is pro Yeltnev and. Uh, Pokey Pidge's team are definitely very scary in the other conference. We saw how Pokey Pidge played last season mm -hmm. with his defensive Pokemon. And Yeltneb, I will still say it to this very day. My battle against him last season, I won because I predicted his switch into Naganda. If that did not happen, I would have lost that battle immediately. This guy knows his VGC. Mm hmm. Uh, I will say the the insta answers for that question has always been Bob, Yeltnip, <laughs> and, and Pitch. The two of them have been the insta answers. Um, so it makes sense <laughs> that he would bring them up as well. Um, now, on the flip side, do you are, are there any teams you feel might be underestimated but pre perform beyond the expectations that are put on them? So I'm going to go one team on each division. For this one, um, for in the Dimax Dimax division, I'm looking at Nate Tube's team, because hmm. he I feel like has that good potential to be a setup machine. Because mm -hmm. Corvin and I could set up spikes, I yeah Corvin could set up spikes. It can even remove hazards. You have Toxic Packs with Toxic Spikes with Baneful Bunker. I know how good toxic toxic packs yeah. could be, yeah. and everything like it's it's deadly. That's one thing I will see season two. I only had one win, but it, I was able to show off the power of toxic packs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm grateful for that. Uh, looking at the mega conference, I again, I'm looking at Infernal Men's team. I'm looking at Landon's team right now. I don't know what he has planned. Cause this is just like a hodgepodge of Pokemon. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I can't even figure out like a clear run strat. To me, it seems like each Pokemon's in there for their own needs, which is something that I did in season one, which kind of bit me hard. So I, I sure hope that uh, he has uh, strategies in mind to kind of work together with, with some of his Pokemon and not just the individual. Yeah. Uh, now, focusing back on your team here, um, give me your honest answer. How do you think you will perform this season? Given my schedule, I'm predicting a 3-2 and two, uh, season. Nice. Cut and dry. Go positive. You know, that's I like it. Um, 
are there any specific goals you might have for this season, whether they're you know short term or long term? I don't want to say any specifically because I don't want this video to come back to bite me. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> um, all about the superstitions. <laughs> yeah, oh, absolutely. Yes. <laughs> and now the final question to top off the main part of this interview. Why are you going to be champion of the Elite Battle League at the end of the season? I keep improving every season, and I feel like this is the season to shine. That's it. There you go. Uh, now, with the interview portion of this out of the way, I'm going to go ahead and throw it over to you. Take this time to go ahead and plug whatever you got going on on the channel. So I got a new solar series going on. I have some fun collab videos happening. I am in the works of making some more discussion-based videos. So throughout these next couple months, Game Reviews is changing their identity in a really good way. So hopefully you guys come by and stick around and check it out. It's exciting stuff. And of course, again, make sure to subscribe. You do not want to miss any of that. Uh, and there it is, ladies and gentlemen. This has been our preseason interview with the coach of the Detroit Luxuries Gamer Views. Be sure to show some love his way. Like I mentioned, subscribe. You don't want to miss any of the content he's got coming up, not to mention the EBL matches as well. Uh, are there, and the final question for you, are there any final words you have for the fans of the Detroit Luxuries out there? Never sleep on Detroit. We learned that last season. <laughs> <laughs> now, I wish you good luck, Sarah, on the season. And we'll be seeing all of you watching real soon for the start of season four on September 3rd. Hope you all have a great day. Take care. Take care.